Hello and welcome back to another Hogwarts Legacy video. I hope you're all doing fantastically as it has been a hot second since I've made one of these. Picking back up right where I left off, we'll be taking a closer look at each of the Hogwarts Legacy common rooms, their contents, and their designs. Before we get started, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button to see any future Hogwarts Legacy content. I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who stuck around through the last year and a half we've been covering Hogwarts Legacy. You are truly the best, and I appreciate you so, so much. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and get into this video. I think that analyzing these rooms is really important to the fan base because the Hogwarts houses are very personal to each of us that have connected with the Harry Potter series. I know that there are quite a lot of us in the community that find a lot of kinship and community within the houses, be it when you're donning your own house robes, should you be the type to dress up, or even just while reading the books. Do you find a certain spark of excitement when a member of your Hogwarts house is mentioned? The Hogwarts houses give us broad personality types, things to be proud of when we join them, and because these houses create such an integral part of the Harry Potter series for me, and I know for you too, Potterheads. If you're not the biggest Potter fan, but maybe playing this game for nostalgia, or perhaps it's even your first taste of the Wizarding World, I hope you enjoy this feeling of home too. All right, let's go ahead and get started with my own house, a lion adorned in red and gold, Gryffindor. You might belong in Gryffindor, where dwell the brave at heart. Their daring, nerve, and chivalry set Gryffindors apart. Let's take a look here. When we enter the Gryffindor common room, our ever-familiar fat lady portrait swings open. I'm sure with the use of a password, and I would be so immensely disappointed to find out that the password doesn't change from time to time. There's so much love poured into this game that I'm almost certain they will do loads of tiny details like that. Stepping into the Gryffindor common room fills our eyes with the warm red and gold hues that are indicative of the house of Gryffindor. The walls are adorned with tapestries, just as we have seen in the films, along with various flags of the red and gold colors and plenty of lions hidden here and there. Initially, I notice a few portraits of characters I don't recognize, but as we know, the portraits do speak and move as they do in the story, so I'm sure we'll get to know each of these, at least their names, though I wouldn't be surprised if quite a few have seriously in-depth backstories. Aside from those portraits, I notice plenty of rugs, comfy seating, and globes of different sizes. Lamps, stained glass, and large cabinets fill up the other parts of the room, alongside of a huge stack of teacups just here on the side table. Students lounge about chatting. I wonder what purpose the common room will have for our character. As the story progresses, the characters could move about and we could find important pieces to the story or perhaps choices to continue our story here through the use of side characters. I do wonder if we'll have to dedicate any time to true studying or if that's done with the extracurricular activities that we know were put in place for our character to catch up with their peers. We also get this little glimpse into what looks like could be the common room as well. But as it is a bit cooler in color, I would venture to guess it was a portion of the sleeping rooms or dorm instead. I see a broomstick, teacups, and books laying about giving this section a bit of a more lived-in appearance. And nothing beats a roaring fire, of course, to warm up a cold castle bedroom. After the gameplay footage that we saw back in March from State of Play, we were given some more bits and pieces of the behind the scenes and creation of the game. In this, we saw a concept design of the Gryffindor common room. Something that struck me as most interesting and iconic were the beautiful owls swooping and perching on the exposed wooden beams that make up the structure of the ceiling and the tower. It's a good thing this is a magical world because cleaning up that mess would not be nice. Other than that, I can't say I noticed anything terribly interesting that we haven't seen already, although I will mention that this room is significantly larger than the version we see in the films and that you can see in person at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour in London. We also get a little glimpse into the Gryffindor common room, as the viewpoint character seems to wake up fully dressed, maybe from a nap? I love the little details on the bedpost to give these beds a more used look, as if this castle truly has been used for centuries. Let's go ahead and hop into the Slytherin common room. Slytherin is actually my second favorite of the two, but does that make me sound super basic for liking the two main houses of the series? Oh well. Luckily enough for you Slytherins, you get quite a lot of content and peeks into your common room. I love how ornate and rich the environments are of Hogwarts Legacy, which, let's face it, might be the most important aspect of the entire game, as they have to live up to what the fans' expectations are of an open world, beloved wizarding universe. What do you think is the single most important part of creating a Harry Potter-based game? 
or perhaps in Slytherin, you'll make your real friends. Those cunning folks use any means to achieve their ends. Walking into the Slytherin common room greets us with a much cooler palette, cold tiles of blue and green and long shadows to indicate a later time or darker place. Through the windows, we see the oceanic blue that gives us the impression of being underwater, fitting as the Slytherin common room resides inside of the Great Lake. I wonder if we'll ever get a glimpse of creatures sliding past, or even the giant squid that lives in the depths. Side note, could students watch any of the underwater events of the Triwizard Tournament from the Slytherin common room or dorm windows? Imagine waking up to one of those freaky mermaids peering in. Maybe Slytherin house isn't for me. During my research, I found an excerpt from Pottermore that reads, It has the ambiance of an underwater shipwreck and sees its fair share of aquatic creatures. We often see the giant squid swooshing by and sometimes more interesting creatures. How do they enter the Slytherin dorms? In another Potter game, we entered through the castle, and as far as I can recall, we didn't seem to be underwater. I was always under the impression that students used a tunnel through the castle to reach the dorm. However, Dylan reminded me that it is said in the Deathly Hallows book that Harry finally describes how to enter. It's in the dungeons, said Harry clearly. You enter through the wall. It's full of skulls and stuff, and it's under the lake, so the light's all green. It would be interesting to see how the game integrates the entrance. I'm not sure how integral it really is, but if they've gone far enough to put this dorm underwater, then I think it'd be somewhat interesting to discover. Circular rugs of varying sizes fill the common room, giving us a further sense of orderliness and cleanliness. The lack of tables and chairs open up the room, which brings an even further loneliness feeling. Almost sterile or cold. Even when you view the decor this way, it's not giving Slytherin the nicest vibes, is it? Regardless, I love it, so please don't think this is a criticism of the house itself. I'm only commenting on how I think the design in the game could be perceived. Where Gryffindor is warm, cozy, cluttered, and inviting, Slytherin is empty, cold, orderly, and quiet. While I don't think the look of this room does the people any justice, I will say that I think the classic simplicity of this room does give it its own kind of beauty. In the last angle we've seen, our Gryffindor viewpoint character of the trailer is walking and having a look through what I believe to be another portion of the Slytherin dorms. Here the tile is different, it's shiny and marble. We can see some instruments playing and students chatting. The vibes in here feel more welcoming than we've just seen, and I'm so curious to know what is up with that green flamed witch in the portrait. In the concept art, we can see a chandelier that looks as if it was inspired by the giant squid. I hope this design does make it to the final concept. This art gives the common room a much cozier feeling, and one I think that seems more like the room we see in the Potter films. All right, let's move on to Hufflepuff. But don't worry, Ravenclaw, I haven't forgotten you. I just think that Hufflepuff tends to come in last a lot, so I mixed it up a bit for this video. You might belong in Hufflepuff where they are just and loyal. Those patient Hufflepuffs are true and unafraid of toil. I think Hufflepuff is extremely special for any fan of the Harry Potter series, as it is the only one we haven't learned about in great detail. From the books, we can ascertain that the Hufflepuff dorms are located just next door to the Hogwarts kitchens, perfect for any puffs looking for a midnight snack. Is it inappropriate to mention the half-joking theory that Hufflepuffs are stoners? Relaxed, friendly, hungry, and puff? Come on, that joke really does write itself. Personally, the first thing I notice when we come into this room is the unique roundness of this space. I think many of us can agree that this common room gives us major Hobbit vibes, which also suits the general vibe of a Hufflepuff, at least in my opinion. I notice hints of green in this room. Hufflepuffs are known to be the best of the best when it comes to plants. We can see a cactus plant on one side here, some vines growing in the back, and various other plants adorn this cozy place. On the left side, there is a student practicing magic with warm yellow sparks flying up from his spell book. Nearby are lamps, again with jeweled green colors. And if you look closely at the circular rugs, you'll see plant leaves decorating the edges. Even on the wooden beams, there seems to be vine-like designs carved into the wood. The Hufflepuff common room concept art gives us a smaller idea of how the common room may look, with light just streaming down from above. I love this concept. It reminds me a bit of like a church or the light in an old sanctuary. Food, jars, and cushions strewn about may make this common room feel like the coziest of them all. 
Okay, let's wrap this up with Ravenclaw. Deep blue and bronze make up the signature colors for this clever house. Or yet in wise old Ravenclaw, if you've a ready mind, where those of wit and learning will always find their kind. So we've already actually had a glimpse at Ravenclaw thanks to the initial Hogwarts Legacy trailer. In it, we saw this cool angle of a set of wing-inspired glass windows, a group of students practicing magic, and even a little cat over here to one side. All right, how many of you knew it was gonna be Ravenclaw? Because that's what I guessed. Unlike in the new trailer, we can see the ceiling in here and a different design of the rug. I wonder if we'll still see this version of a room in the final game. In these first few steps, we can see that they brought in stars to help illuminate our view of the house. A small statue bust sits on a side post, a silver tankard, and plenty of books. The details I love the most are lamps just above and the telescope off to one side. And if I'm not mistaken, even the curtains are adorned with tiny specks of stars. How pretty! It looks like the common room extends past just one single room as well, and I'm guessing they do this in all the houses. Looking into the next room, there's more of what we've seen in previous common rooms, such as circular rugs, globes, and a roaring fireplace. Off to one side, I think there might be a knight and a grandfather clock stands against the entryway. Despite this being one of the rooms we've already had a glimpse of, there isn't much more I can say on it. It feels a bit empty still, despite being filled with furniture. But as this is a work in progress, there just isn't any way it won't be filled to the brim with things to admire by the time it's complete. Unfortunately, this is the only common room we don't have any concept art for it quite yet, but there's supposed to be a concept art book to be released this fall. Okay, and with that, we've reached the end of the video. Today, we took a closer look at each of the Hogwarts Legacy common rooms. Which house are you going to choose for your first playthrough? Leave a comment down below with any thoughts, ideas, theories, or even general inquiries you might have, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!